So I'll start my presentation um, for the Digital Humanities in the Nordic Countries Conference 2020. As you can see on my slides, the title of my presentation is Towards an Analysis of Gender in Video Game Culture, Exploring Gender-Specific Vocabulary in Video Game Magazines. Um, my name is Thomas Schmidt, the first author, um, and I'm from the Media Informatics Group uh, at the University of Regensburg in Germany. As you can see, um, we will talk a lot about video games and more specifically video game magazines. Um, I don't think it's um, very necessary to motivate why to talk about video games anymore. It, become, it has become a, a major part of culture. Um, just one statistic showing um, that gaming and the gaming industry is nowadays more successful and popular than many other media industries. So it has a huge influence on culture, on society, and therefore it's relevant to um, look at video games. Um, there's also, some would call it a cliche, uh, some would call it the truth more or less, that the gender depiction in video games is not very nice, uh, specifically directed towards women. Um, here's just one example, one of the most famous memes in recent um, history also makes fun of this, which also shows that this cliche and this expectations of video games being um, uh, bad in the depiction of um, gender and specifically female gender has become part of um, um, the modern pop culture. Of course, in the humanities and sociology and psychology, people have looked into this phenomenon um, by analyzing one's the video games themselves, of course, but also as we do video game magazines. Um, the methods in the humanities are, for example, discourse analysis and uh, yeah, most popular is content analysis. So taking a limited list of video games or video game magazines and um, developing a coding scheme to um, code the gender phenomenon. Um, for example, how are women depicted? Um, are they depicted partially nude and so on and so on? And then counting what comes out of this. And uh, to summarize the results of um, the current uh, literature, um, one can say that uh, we can identify an underrepresentation of female characters. Female characters are often also just uh, part of the supporting cast. Um, we can definitely also identify some a, a sort of over-sexualized presentation of female characters, um, which is very common if you ever played some major video games. Females are often um, depicted partially nude or very nude, um, and this is um, more or less also something that content analysis can identify on video games or also video game magazines. And some sort of um, general stereotypical depiction of females, but also of males, which are also presented rather often as very stereotypical. Now, this is uh, all quite interesting research um, in our opinion for gender studies and um, to evaluate uh, representation of gender or the forming of gender identifications in society. Um, but in the ca case of digital, digital humanities, we wanted to validate these findings via computational text analysis. And we explored some first uh, methods and now we want to present our findings for these. Now, some of the younger audience might even wonder what are video game magazines. If you think about video games nowadays, you would get information from various online platforms. You would get information from YouTube videos, from blogs, from podcasts. But before the internet became major, majorly popular, um, video game magazines, um, which you could buy at shops, um, were quite popular and were quite a big thing. Um, to acquire ma video game magazines, we use archive.com, one of the largest platform online that tries to digitize um, a lot of stuff, not just magazines, but they also have a section for video game magazines. Um, those magazines are mostly digitized um, concerning OCR and are not curated professionally, may I say, but more um, published by people that have inter interest into the topic and that have um, video game magazines digitized. Um, we selected three major video game magazines. Um, there's not 
a specific historical reason why we are looking specifically at these magazines. Um, but from a pragmatic standpoint, they had the most issues. Um, they had um, uh, acceptable quality concerning the OCR. So this is our selection for our first explorations. Um, computer Gaming World, PC Zone magazines, and the computer and video game magazines. As you can see, um, they have different time spans. Around 2005, 2011, they uh, ceased to exist because, of course, internet became more popular. Um, but these are the issues we included in our analysis. They look like this. Um, as you can imagine, OCR is to some extent a bit challenging in the sense that uh, especially the colorful images and so on are, are not um, are producing a lot of noise. Uh, so the OCR, OCR looks a lot like this. Um, but this is not too much of a problem because if you look at the text itself, um, the OCR actually works quite well. For most of these magazines, the OCR was done um, by an Abbey Fine reader. This is um, how it looks like. And for our explorations, um, this is a, a not good quality, I would say. We did apply some filter techniques. We did apply some spell correction and lexicon checks to improve the OCR. It's still um, not perfect, um, but enough for our goals here. If you look at some general statistics, um, we have over 600 issues in our corpus, over 29 million tokens. Um, this is a small word cloud, and as you can imagine, most words are concerned with gaming and computers and so on. Um, we wanted to perform a primarily diachronic analysis. For this, we differentiated um, our issues into time spans beginning in the 1980s, as you can see, leading to 2011. I don't want to go into details into all the statistics. You can pause the video for this. Um, but as you can see, um, we don't have a equal distribution. And I just want to highlight this as a limitation for our preliminary analysis. But we have enough material for each time span. How is our analysis going? We apply the linguistic inquiry and word count lexicon. It's a lexicon or a lexical resource of psychology um, existing and improved since the 90s, which offers basically um, words for specific categories. And there's also a female and male category, including males to depict females and males. Um, these are some of the more prominent examples. Um, the majority is consisted, of course, by uh, pronouns like he and she. Overall, we um, also added some words that we thought are important, which leads us to a list of specific female and male vocabulary. If you look at some of the most um, frequent words, of course, the pronouns are the most frequent, um, but you can also later on identify words like manager and queen which might even lead to some specific game-specific um, developments, but this is what we have. Again, we focus on the comparison of five-year time spans. If you don't look at uh, the distribution of this female and male words as percentage among all tokens, among all words, I want to focus you um, first on the male tokens. We have uh, not a lot of development going on, but uh, around 0.8% of all tokens or those male tokens. Compared to the female tokens, this is much smaller, of course, as you can see. Um, this is not a new um, insight, but it validates the findings already made by a content analysis that there seems to be an underrepresentation um, of females in video games since um, words describing females are, are not used as often as words describing males. Um, to get a bit further, we also wanted to specifically an analyze the negative depiction of women. To do this, we, just, yeah, we created a set of um, yeah, insulting and condescending words um, depicting women. Um, I will not read them out in, in precisely, but you can imagine what they are. It's just a small list of um, words. Uh, and we looked specifically at the usage of these words among all female tokens. Of course, um, the overall numbers are very small because it's just a very small list of words. Um, but I want to highlight um, 
schools, especially the sum M line in this graph, um, we can identify a, a increase of the usage of these words um, until 2005 and then a small decrease until now. Um, and the interesting thing is that this specific development, a, a yeah, progression, progressional increase until 2005 and a small decrease until now is actually something that has also been found in some of the research I presented previously in gender studies. Um, if you want to begin hypothesizing why this is the case, um, a lot of games released in this time span of 2001 to 2005, GTA 3, for example, which was very popular, and there are many games that copied um, the gameplay and so on. Um, it is also very, um, it was a lot in the media because of condescending and insulting and depiction of women. And this might explain this development. Um, of course, um, if you think about uh, all that we've done, it's just preliminary work and we just got started with it. Um, but it's interesting just that you can find such developments just with this limited set of methods. Of course, we plan to increase our corpus and it's very limited on just uh, the material of three video game magazines. Of course, it's also just English focused, which it's also some sort of limitation. We explore to improve the OCR. Um, our model, our methods are very basic. It's just word frequencies at the moment. We want to explore more advanced methods in the future. And what we think is the most important um, that we want to apply some sort of mixed methods approach. Um, meaning that things like this, the, like what I said before, that there was maybe GTA or other games influential in an increase of condescending words towards women. Um, might be validated by really looking at the magazines, really looking at parts of the magazines and the video games themselves. So I hope um, you um, find our research uh, interesting. If you want to contact me um, or want more infos about the project, here is all the information that you need. If this is a YouTube video, which I plan to it being, um, you will also find this information in the, um, in the description. Um, thank you very much and uh, I hope you enjoyed my talk.